Wow, I just saw this Jimmy Kimmel thing. It was so cringy. It's like, dude, what, what's going on out there? Can we bring back the gong show, please? Can we pre please bring back the... I mean, something. Really? How do you, you know, it's like you know you run out of material when everything's a remake. So I bought this giant plunge here on the four-hour um, euro dollar. This three-period RSI on the bottom panel. And if we do the um, signal entrance thing, we're looking for a two to five period pullback from swing high to swing low in closing prices. And that's going to be why we would take the trade. If we see divergence, we'll take those trades. We can also see the flaw in buying just because it's oversold doesn't make it like the optimal place to ride some giant move, but it, it never is really. In other words, even if you got in this market at some premium area, it's already moved 100 pips. You could have got the fuck out and made money. But no, you st stuck it out through the whole thing to make the extra 100 pips. And it took you like five days. Now, if you want to do that, be my guest. I don't see the point in that. If you were to sell this um, supply zone up here, I'm just going to mark off the rooftops on the four hour. So if we sell here, we start selling here very heavy. We sell lightly into this giant void here. So these are a couple fractals here. If you canvas this whole area with a stack of tickets that goes through here, so you're going to take a script out that's coverage this, but you'd put more focused tickets and scalps built into this top. Then if you go back to this top, right? Now this is going to be even more. This is eight hours deeper, right? You're going to have to put even more tickets there. So this is why the market's telling you where to get in. And it's telling you here, it's a 25 pip window of, of doom, or this is the kill zone, or whatever people want to call it. If you are able to accept this much risk, you will make more money. Okay, so now you don't have to be here for these trades either, but if, imagine you sold into this giant um, void, which we never actually went to, but you put the pennings in there anyways, just to be on the safe side, in case we go screaming up there. So the same thing can be said for the downside here. That's why I bought at the market at 1 o'clock. And I just got in on limits. Now, the more limits I get in, the more logical the trade is because my target here now, going to current auctions, it's a four-hour auction world here. Every wick, every so-called fake breakout where people get trapped so this box here this is eight hours of nothing and it explodes out of there and if you put buy stops above and sell stops below they're going to trap you in this confirmation thing but even that guy makes money if he got the stops right if you run 25 pip stops on this you can see that yeah when it finally takes out um I guess this is where you're going to get trapped on some cells. Now they're going to take out your 40 pip stops, right? Because if you don't have 50 pip stops, right? So your stops got to be out like this. When they go after this stop, because this will be the, the long traps when you got trapped long, because see how they just keep wicking it up and wicking it one more pip higher. Now, this is why it's retarded absolutely downright retarded to put a buy stop like this and this is a 50 pip window here you put a buy stop on top of this for a breakout really now i could see a goober getting in on a breakout of this eight hour thing we break out but you got to be wondering at this point when they tip this rooftop and you could have look how it just keeps going out like just a little bit more pip yeah, you could put a you could put uh, five standard lots up here. Absolutely, put it up here and just have a target of one standard lot gets out, just in case it keeps poking up there. Because look at they keep poking it up. 
Now, the big question is, if you did get filled on a standard lot in this first window, did you cash out? Where'd you cash out? Like, you could have just waited till it came all the way down to this wick. There's nothing magical here. You don't need ICT. I don't get... That guy is incredible. He's got his whole, all this nomenclature for all this bullshit. Well, this is the... Dude, can't you see what's going on here? Now, there, there are people that confirmation-wise, if you look at the big picture, we got to look at the big picture, man. You don't understand what we're doing here, see? I don't think you're going to work out this prop firm. But, like, so now there's a guy that's, oh, they keep getting confirmed. We're going to break out any minute, and we're going to go screaming into this void. Of course, the, I understand the dream. And Or you got cell limits in this pocket, and you're like, damn it, they're not fill, fucking filling my limits, those bastards. This is why you need a market on top of your limit. When it's up, you're short. Now, imagine you built a short position in that window. And you could still have the goober stop entries, but better to have limits and markets. They're coming right into, I mean, you can't get any plainer than this. Four-hour chart closed up. This classical 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time closing four-hour bars, not the ones that are in some weird, but those work too, because then it's, it becomes 2 a.m. It becomes you know, 80, um, everything's shifted four-hour intervals. Now, you could get the MT5 out, look at the two-hour charts, but you might even lose your mind. You could actually do a 12-hour chart would be the best, right? Because you got two decisions a day. It's up, it's down. You'd be surprised. Look at this thing turning a dime here in the four-hour. Now, granted, it wicks up higher, but if, you, if you've got at least a, a 10 pip stop, you could have sold here at the market like a complete doofus. That's uh, old talk for old school talk for retard. Um, but yeah, if you could just sell here in the four hour up, I'm short. Now, granted, you're into this window. I don't know if you can see this wick, but you're in this uh, the the trap traders thing to make the 25 pips back to here. Then, oh, you know, your your four hour robots are triggered here, right? Now that is a a one time only one trick pony for that exact algo very small bar here it would in a non-directional breakout system it would have been trapped short in a way because unless it's cashing out right or it sees this and puts a hedge on it to close ideally your robot's going to see okay we close down actually it would be a market bot it would say we close down slightly just put on a hedge or go long I don't think the robot can see this top becoming a bottom of the four hour and kind of realize, well, you know, we did wick up here, but um, taking all that into consideration, what's the next move over the next four to eight hours? I don't really care. I mean, I could care if I have a big swing trade on, I'm going to let it go through all that stuff. I'm going to be like, yeah, they're going to chop it around. It's going to be a big fucking mess here. You know, like anybody that built a position from either the long or short during this whole thing, like you sold every rally religiously, you know, and you got Solomon's that keep getting hit here. And you're scalping something, right? Because you don't know if it's going to go this or maybe it's going to rock it up and blow through this shit. And then your cell limits will be triggered up in these things, got these sleeper cells up here. So, but look at this. Look at this vicious move out of there, you know. And if you switch the daily chart without changing anything, this is why you can't hardly see that trade on the daily. This is like completely a six ox away. But look how they just wick up a little bit higher here. So this is easy stuff, right? You're selling these highs. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is either. But if you kept selling those new highs and then, man, look at that thing cash out. Then you're buying new lows. This is the daily. And then you're, you have sell limits here that never fill, but this one fills and this one filled. If you If you think this is a trap... For buyers on the daily bars. I mean, that's the winning trade is to go against that because you're only risking the wick. It's only 25 pip wick on the dailies. Now, when you get a wick like this, now this is a complete flush out of price here. Look at this inverted hammer on the on the daily. And this is when these scripts pay pay huge money because if you're gonna if you're willing to sell this and you can see that on the four hour chart probably nice uh consolidation there you got sell limits in here 
and these don't fill, but you're ready to sell more there. On the four hour, you can see that you'd put more here because you're going to have another little zigzag here, I suppose, somewhere around there on the four hour. And that's why you get that amazing fill here. And then rips all the way back to the top because people aren't going to want to buy when it comes back to the breakout. If they think this is the breakout, yeah, we're going to buy when it comes back here in this 25 pip window, which in the four hour is going to look like a little, there's probably some fractal in here. And then that's your trade. In my opinion, that's your trade. It's kind of easy, but then you could also be building on the sell side here. And if you're doing it in chunks of 300K, 500K, whatever, you've got those trade plans running. Now here's your stupid ass classical doji. Just as classic as it gets, you know. Um, small range, closes right in the middle. You put your sell stop, you put your buy stop, and you walk away. The trade rarely happens. I mean, can you see another instance on here? I can't. Where the really low, I mean, that's ridiculously low range. I think that might be Sunday night. I don't know. So, but that's another thing. The breakout on Sunday night, which way is it going to go the rest of the week? You know, you can make all these things about, oh, the trend this, the trend that. To me, I'm buying that plunge. If only for tonight, if only for one night, Luther Vandross, if only for one night. So it's four hours down. It's the obvious buy. Um, so before the plunge here, yeah, you get divergence on RSI. You know, this is making higher highs. You can, obvious proof that it's losing momentum. Um, this is supposed to be the top. This is the breakout, so people are going to buy here, right? It does pause there, but then another 25 pips of follow-through as it starts to go into my buy limits are sitting here. So I bought here, I bought more here, and I bought Morist here, but I don't get filled here till like, here. And then that cashes out. I got to have 20 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 pip winners in there. That's a 50 pip move here, almost. And now it's like, okay, we're down like 50 pips. We've actually slammed uh, 60 from wick to wick, but the body is literally a 50 pip body. Now, it's not magical that it's stopping on that number or has respect for it. It's just a quantifiable thing so you know how big you need to run your stops. The market is slammed down here almost 75 pips clean bam and then another four hours down okay what if you bought here and you bought this close this one made money back to the floor and this is the bottom becoming a top i'm sure on the four hour i, I mean the one hour inside of here and then we drift and then we just trigger the breakout bots the four hour breakout bots would be triggered here and trigger, triggered here, but you could say they got trapped a little bit and chopped. This is where they get whips on. That's why you can't just you can't just write a robot that trades breakouts because it's going to get its ass kicked. And the argument is that, well, the market's going to destroy any robot. It'll dest destroy any monolithic scheme. Yes, like if you can't like it'd be right like writing songs that are just nothing but verse or. I guess pure chorus, you could probably get away with it these, these days. Just write a pure chorus um, uh, song. Somebody's not there hugging this. So, uh, I'll be there in a minute. But this quantifiable four hours from open to close, and I took the open out. I just going to say close to close because open to close, if you do on candlesticks, it's just retarded. But I got the, the candlesticks are there. If I zoom out, I will lose the definition of the candlesticks. So I made these bars. Um, at this level, it's pure bars. Now, here's the hint of candle. Just touch a candle there. But it's all what you want to see, you know. Um, I feel comfortable knowing that if I buy this, this um, void in here, that it's going to cost me X. And I can just say, oh, I'll, I'll buy this this big thing. If we ever get in there, I'll buy it. And if I put a 50-pip stop on that, I can make 100 pips. 
And I'm not going to judge where we are. I mean, structure-wise, it does look like we're going down. Like so in the last video, it looks like we're going to fall off into the abyss, right? But how do you get there is this, we nick this wick at the end of the month here. And that's the scalper's 25 pip scalp. That's already been taken. And your exit would have been, you know this entrance and the exit's right here right now. So you're right at the exit. The question is, do you hold the whole position until we make it back to my other target, which is going to be right here. This low on the dailies. And so I'm out of 25% um, of the position right here. So this is the obvious exit right there. I mean, just kind of like, is this a breakout? Do you want to go short here? I mean, it is down. Like, so it's all bearish, right? That's a big question. I don't think so. Look at all this drama up here. So this is why I think no nonsense is stupid because 80% of this market, it's going nowhere. Why aren't you range trading it out reversals? Why don't you just limit range trading it? Why, why can't you range trade it? I, I don't get it. Because God damn it, if I tell you once, I tell you a million times, so we trend traders here. You don't understand. I build an algorithm with a moving average. And I'll, let me show you something. So look at this thing. 80% setup and 20% uh, screaming. But it is fragile. I mean, if the dollar, I don't know what could happen here but there is this vacuum stacking up here and uh, gold and bitcoin all tumble down and the dollar goes screaming up and people won't be able to make sense of it there yeah but they printed so much fucking money yeah but dude we don't we don't have i mean is for all the lockdown shit and all this nanny pretend shit this is a capitalist economy without any regulation <laughs> people step right in and go oh yeah it's broke is it I'll take it. Don't forget cash for clunkers was a fucking boat anchor on people. All that paper filling out. You know, dude, there's Bitcoin. <laughs> Forget about it. But yeah, it's going to be a rangers, range traders market now. You just saw wave three in the stock market from the standpoint of it's the biggest fucking most glorious fucking wave you'll ever see in your lifetime. I think it, even if you're going to live for another 40 years. So that's, 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 that's already baked into the cake. Now, gold looks trapped to me, but, you know, maybe it does go to three grand in five more years. But I'm not going to sit hold on to that lockup margin of that stupid trade, you know. I mean, the thing about trading, day trading, or being in the market for eight hours and making 800 bucks is different than being in, yeah, I'd be like, oh, gold has to go up to X. Yeah, I finally made, off. finally back to my principal after commissions. Jesus after the spread, after the timing, and then I needed the money, and then I didn't need the money, and then I, I don't know. You know, people are apparently just realizing that they, they might die. So I'm fucking wearing a mask? Dude, just inhale. Try to get, get your fucking, be the, be uh, patient zero on the fucking, uh, what do they call it? The herd immunity. Be the first uh, sheeple to, to, to crawl out of the fucking crab bowl. Jesus Christ, people. I, I, I don't get what the fucking mask thing. I don't. I, if I was 105, I wouldn't wear a mask. I embrace death at any moment. But I don't want to be pulling the trigger on myself. I'm not that. I'm not, I don't want to go to hell because I killed myself. But yeah, you hit me with a, you know, some, listen, Give me a plate of Corona. Anybody have any? Hi, Corona. So, I don't know. It looks just like a bad trade to me. It looks like people just panicked. They took out a loan on their credit cards to keep adding to a losing position on that mask thing. And now the CDC comes out with some hocus pocus. It's this way. It's that way. What the fuck? You're like the guy that was, uh, I had trading options, $250 for an option in the currency markets. 
pre forex. Like this shit's like two hundred fifty bucks. I'm like, Phew. he tells me the guy's from Mensa. He's a member of Mensa. I'm like, well, I don't know. He should be a member of like uh, common sense, simple, simple shit. So I go for the simple shit. You can make all these claims about RSI. That's a closing price. These wicks are where the money's at. Hasn't anybody figured it out yet? The supply and demand don't work. I, ICT told me the supply and demand don't work. Don't, no, none of that works. <laughs> he, was show, he was showing this video where he divulged that his latest video, he's using percent R. I do believe in percent R by Williams. And uh, I'm like, yeah, dude, but yeah, of course it's oversold in the supply zone. All these things can be true at once. The question is, did you put five standard lots in there? Did you build a position in that that rangy Wyckoff accumulation distribution phase? Yeah, Wyckoff exists. The whole thing's accumulation distribution. The markups and markdowns only rarely happen. That's 20% of the ride. So it's marked down heavily here, right? Now the banks are going to come in and buy that without even they got buy limits all the way down to to Memphis on this. You really think we're coming down into this hole tonight? Even if we do get into this hole, it's going to be a rocky road. Look at the look at the the poke up into this. What did somebody what would have somebody told you on this day, this pullback, this would be the last fucking entry. Here, obviously, everything above that pull back this is the last buyer's buy the last trend buy in a trend trader pullback scenario this is your buy <laughs> otherwise you're chasing you're breaking you got the turtle trade that just put buy stops in and go well to see that works see oh it works just great so you get trapped up here you're the last goober to buy this thing and then you get whipsawed for how long a month of whipsaw I, I, I can only imagine if you went to the No Nonsense Discord and asked people during this whole phase, some people are probably getting a good buy here. They're like, oh, dude, my algo right here, I bought here. Well, sure. Who didn't buy that, right? And maybe you bought this pullback. Not bad, but the other question is, did you get out or did you buy here thinking it was just going to keep going? Right? So if this is a a flag in your mind or a pennant or inverted Swiss cheese, whatever it is. This is some rocky stuff. It, meanwhile, unbeknownst to you, this is the claim of ICT because he knows everything's so insider. Like, what? Well, there's stuff I can't even talk about here. No, it's obvious. This is the 50-yard line, right? People are selling at the edge, the very edge. And here, once you, once you fill this void, gets filled in a gushing move. Yeah, once it gets up here, it's traps fill. On the dailies, you could have sold. Why can't this guy do it? What is he? A Democrat that's, a, what is it? Like, he's got the brain of Pelosi. He's only, how old do you think this no-nonsense guy is? 35, 40? And this other guy, ICT, what the fuck happened to your brain, dude? Well, he's selling courses. So. Well, I can explain that. <laughs> he's got this one video where he's like, well, what this is, there's a gap here. Not many people know about this, but right there's a gap. You buy right there, see? Oh, that's how that works. Fuck, I never thought of it. But see, who's not buying all the way down here? Just lay some limits in. It's not that fancy. Here, you bought this pullback, you bought this pullback, you bought this. Now, this is where you get crushed. I bought the pullback, like you said. It was a shallow pullback. You know what, you gomer fucking pile? I bought right here, like you said. Yeah, dude, somebody sold in. I'm sure you could have sold into it, too. Why are you just doing that? Uh, you know, my algo told me that I got a signal service. Oh, I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, come on, kidding? Yeah, well, can't you see what's going on here? I use an RSI. Look at this divergence. Right, that's why I sold right there. Of course that works. Did you wait? That's a critical thing. Did you wait for this actually to be, well, it's almost a little bit higher here, Bryce, but I'm going to call that um, on closing prices. That's divergence. And then, you know, I sold there and I held on. I'm still short. 
my targets down here. I mean, I don't know about you, but when this thing comes back to this, I'm out because look at the buyers coming. This daily chart, by the way, look at the buyers coming and just smash that thing around. There's all sorts of pips in there, high probability pips. Why are you stepping outside of anything past just the bar chart? You know, this closing price tells me whether it's up or down because I can see peaks and valleys. But when it comes down into this supply zone, you got a buy limit here. You got buy limits here that don't fill. Like this whole 25 pip window, that's just easy fucking stupid money. You got sell limits up here. You're like, yeah, I'll probably come out FOMC and run, run it up here. And I'll just, I'll have cash outs. And maybe you're still short. Do you ever think of that? I don't because I don't think about holding a trade to here. And then I'm like, I didn't cash out of something by here where I know it's coming into the buyer's window. What are you nuts? Now, granted, you could wait for every rally that's up on the day. I saw when I go against everybody. Oh, I know everybody's long. It's like, dude, this thing's breaking out. It's going up. You know, they printed too much money in the United States. Blah, blah, blah. Stupid. You know, don't go full retard. Obviously, the scalp, it's the dailies. Oh, yeah, it's just going to be Rangeville now. This could melt down, but how are we going to get on the short train? We're going to go to the four-hour chart, and we're going to just sell every rally on the four-hour. So at 5 p.m., in about seven minutes, we're going to be closing up. Would you sell that? Probably not, but you could. You could sell a little bit, and you could put sell limits all the way up, because I guarantee you, another thing, sure, this market could turn on a dime, but it can also wick lower. So here it turns on a dime on the four hour, literally turns on a dime here. But then they just wick you out of that. You put stop in here and God damn it. I got 80 standard lots on that one ticket. Fucking hey, man, I've been waiting all day for that trade. <laughs> so here are the obvious eggs. It's going to be the non-greedy eggs, which I already have pre-programmed because the script I laid in here buys here and it cashes out at least 12 pips, and here, if it goes to 20, which would be here at 25, that's going to make good money. If it makes it all the way back to this breakout, which I don't think really exists anymore. Another thing is that I don't think this price, the market can see it anymore because it's been cleared and it's been taken over by a new price. So I'd have to update this. Bring it over here where that is really target. Because we've already done this scalp here where we bought this new low and took our 25 to whatever pips we can get. And if we see it wick up there now, if I'm watching it on the one hour, I'm getting out because it's coming back to the doji on the four here, just banging up on that. Look how if you had a trailing stop robot in your short, the funny thing is, is another argument for the trailing stop, which doesn't always work. It could also be a stop entry. Um, trailing stop entry. So if you ran a a super goober <laughs> uh, buy strategy, you have a trailing buy stop here, and this is also your stop that you're using for the short that you got triggered on your Williams, Williams Fractal. So you literally got in on Williams Fractal. You can show how anything works, right? And you're short, and you're like, la di da I've got a, a 50 pip stop. I'm going to trail it, right? I'm going to do super tight here. I can't lose on this trade. I got in here. If it backs up on me, I just got, I just made 25 pips. That's called the free trade. Doesn't always happen. And then they cancel replace every four hours, move it to here, move it, move it, cancel, replace the robots doing that for me. I'm still short. I'm like, holy fuck. No matter what happens, I'm going to make 75 pips, right? And it's just beautiful. It doesn't get any better than this. Another cancel replace. Now 5 p.m. is coming, five minutes. Am I going to put a, a buy stop here? Now, if i not even long yet, will this be the first breakout coming into tonight? Do you think we could take that out by 9 o'clock? Well, if not, what's going to happen is we're going to close here at 5 p.m. and it's going to just keep tanking. And if you think that, you should go short right now. But structurally, would you be out of your fucking mind to go short here? Maybe. On a giant position, yeah, maybe. If you're long on a giant position, now you got to think, where's my sell stop go? It's here now. 
Am I going to trail it here on the five? The robot would if you told it to. Same thing. Say you went, um, you went short on trailings. Every time you got a higher low, you put a sell stop in. Did you just get picked up? You got low ATR, low true range per eight hours. You just went short. Great. But you got to think about cashing out of something as you come down into these new lows. So it's this back and forth. There's order imbalances are obviously played out in the smash into the vacuum. There's plenty of uh, fresh prices down here. So you're just stocking and restocking the toilet paper shelves here in essence. And the ride is like eight hours, 12 hours. I mean, certainly for the guy that can handle this auction here, now you're talking about, um, well, you really never took out these highs, right? But it was about this being the oldest high and this one here. And once you fill this void, right? People try to sell into this, I'm sure. They're like, well, bottoms become tops and it's a pivot and blah, blah, blah. But if you only trade every four hours, you've only got... On, on the market tickets, you've got this cell, you got four cells here, or maybe six if you count, if this candle was up before that one, or two up candles here. So two cells here, actually, if you're going to literally take every rally and sell it. And you had your cell limits in this thing, or maybe you're short from here. You know, you're like, fuck it, I'm going short. Well, you can see that you would have cashed out your biggest if you were to sell all the way into here you cash out just like those people and they're trapping the the breakout sell the confirmation guys are trapping here but like i said with a wide enough stop they eventually get paid and they're like that's great trading i love that trade here we got divergence on our side right now you can make the argument for this trend line is going to break so the leading indicator is you can do a pattern that's tighter on our side than you can do on price we're waiting for the top of the hour here. And then it's going to go, so Wednesday's coming. And um, it swaps and all that nonsense. And so if this is going to be the low of the week, or if it's just the low of, you know, it is the new low of the week, the obvious exit's going to have to be here conservatively and then, more buy limits below or hold on to have the position till we start to hit this void and then I'm getting out. And then, sure, I could put sell limits up here, but I'd probably jump into the another currency pair that's tanking. It's just, I just like to buy these plunges. So anything below here, I just stack up all these scripts and just let them rip. And then hopefully I'm going to take those 25, 50 pips off and maybe even be flat here so the if you've already padded the account with a winning 50 percent of the initial size then you got the flexibility to put in some more limits and be like okay i can trade this size and it's about size regulation over a bunch of tickets for me because then i don't feel any any stress if i had to babysit this and keep pulling the trigger on you know, it's not like you couldn't make a lot of money on this trade. You sell 40 standard lots every time you see divergence. So here's your first divergence here. Here's your second one. And um, then just hold on for this ride as you make take out these lows. This swoops down. That's a lot of money. It's 100 pips with like a 30 pip stop. 40, 50 pips stop to make 100 and just bam. And it's one of those, another one of these measured moves, so to speak. I'm sure right here, a little bit of a pause and then it's cleaned down. But you can do the same trade here with a limit just pending. To take the 25, you're not going to make. Now you, you're really hoping it comes back to this or here eventually, right? So 
Maybe it does. Maybe you get this whole scenario that comes to here, bangs on the ceiling, sellers come in, they fail, then it can rise above, but otherwise sellers are going to come in here and you're going to go into a new low into the end of the week and it's going to be a complete fucking meltdown. Now, you could go short. Like I said, you can go short right now. It's 5 p.m. So the spread just got wide. I just want the five and a half pips here. So here goes away, which I think is sharing the same data feed. You look at the spreads. Exact same thing as uh, Falcon FX. Same same liquidity uh, provider, I'm sure. Really exactly the same. They both sell. They both trade Bitcoin and all that. But I'm trying to stay just on the euro dollar here because it's too much to bounce around. There's plenty here. You actually, <clears throat> this twenty, you know, this thing moving. You could trade really big here because when the spreads do tighten up. But the problem with holding um, scalps is that when Asia comes here, you'd be kicked out of a three pip stop here. But it's kind of nice with the swing trading because. You wake up and you're filled on something. You're like, eh, you can decide right there. Am I in big enough? Should I buy more? Like if this thing plunges, you go to sleep at night and the market comes into this hole. And it just literally, you can't even believe that it goes down here. You're like, oh yeah, I got a big fat ticket. Right here where I know it's like maximum insane supply zone. And that ticket's got a, a 20 and a, a 50 pip winner built into it. You're already out of that thing. You wish it had this on it, but would you honestly want to bet against it's supposed to of course this doesn't exist anymore for the market you know because you've taken that out like if you bought into this your first buy for me and i'd buy 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 and then buy this whole thing when it does come back to here you can see people are dumping that's why you get the doji there but now that's like that's all gone we just got this void stacking up above now. Um, I'm long here. It could still go lower. I'd still buy more down here. But these tickets are going to last like um, 8 and 12 hours. And um, I am expecting we could still go lower here, which would be fine. And then to here, because I got the British pound going too on the background. So I'm trading the British pound, but I'm not going to go that chart because it's too confusing. So the three period RSI, you can see all the wonderful uh, trade entries here, I'm sure. But I like using it for this kind of. Uh, I want to tre I want to break the trend line in the. Um, RSI before it breaks in price. So I like this kind of setup. I'm looking I'm looking for this to break. It's like it could break and keep tanking, so it's not a guarantee, but it's like this trend line break. This is leading price by quite a bit here. So if I say, well, this looks like a wedge. And here's where it kind of it breaks it and then it still goes lower. So if you drew it on three tops. This one you got multiple tops. So there's more pressure on this one as far as I'm concerned. This one you could say, okay, I got it, I got it here. I'm waiting for it to break this trend line. And boom. Big rip. So you can also do top bottoms on our side if you want to push it. Like this top becomes a bottom. Whereas it also top becomes a bottom here. right to this so this thing comes back here's um well yeah it's pretty whipsawed here not a lot of signal here's kind of a divergence i guess you could call it for this move but i'm using it on multiple bars here so i'm trying to use it as a uh, giant so five minutes after. So here's the critical thing is the spread should tighten up now. In about one minute, the five minute traders are going to come in here and start trading. 
Well, seems like six to seven minutes after the top of the hour, we start to get a move. So we could get a reversal here. We closed out the five, the four hour bar. We could still wick down though. Or we go up, cash out, and then we make a new low, maybe in an hour or two. I'm up for anything. So the the way to really protect your, to pad the account along the way, if you are swing trading, is to scalp and take the 10, 20, whatever they give you. Because that that 12 uh, pip target and that 24 pip target are way more probably going to be tagged. And then you can have free up some margin. You didn't make a million dollars on that trade, but you got to pay for the the big moves just aren't very often. You know, it's only 20% of the time you're going to see a big move. So you got to pay the rent on just this chatter here. So, so I'm long. I'm waiting to cash out. Let's see what happens with that thing. So. Three bird RSI, uh, four hour chart to me is a <clears throat> doable. You and I can see these nice, yeah. You know, I guess if you don't mind being in the market for for one day, this plunge here. If you bought here and you held that, that's like one day up. It's just a beautiful. It just goes rocketing through the floor here, and that really is. Um, not a full auction, but it's definitely like fresh lows there. That's just an obvious trade here. I'm only looking for the next four hours to make 25 pips in four hours. And my conservative target is going to be right there. All right, so that's the trade. It's a scalp. And the rest of this position, I don't know how much I got sitting here. Okay, the spread should tighten up. That's three and a half. It's going to get tighter. By six o'clock for sure, absolutely. So every hour that ticks by here, and uh, if we go to the one-hour chart, we get a triple bottom. We got divergence on the uh, three-period RSI on the one-hour there. So here it's a lot more dynamic. If you go for a one-hour uh, with a three-period RSI, a lot of a lot of signals. Here's a here's a divergence. So here's a buy for a nice run. Very sensitive three-period. You're buying this. And you make your 20, 30 pips. Here's the end of the day coming. Um, this is going to be the obvious target. If you're going to buy every little pullback there, you got a little divergence. But we could still tank because you have a reversal here too. So it's a double-edged sword, but that is the, the, the question is we're going to take this out. If we take that out, would you buy more? Or are you gonna you're in so big that you gotta get out here on the scalp and then you can free up some margin, come back with limits here. So it's fun, you know, it's not like uh the beauty is that you don't really know what's gonna happen in some regards here. So when you came back to the floor here on close, and then we, we hem and haw, and then look how this thing just just banging and once again the if you start running your trailing stops here, look how it just how precisely you don't get stopped out of that trade. It's amazing. So this is going to be... Uh, so the promised land is going to be up here by tomorrow, but right now we just make it. got to make it to here. And if we make it to this one-hour rooftop or here, I'm going to go flat. I'm look for something else that's setting up for this high drama plunges is what I want. So I can lay the grid in and just walk away and let it happen. But it's where you lay the grid, and that's the thing. You want to put your orders kind of deeper than you would normally do it. Even if you missed out on selling this uh, drift out of Asia and uh, it plunges, the heavy-duty buying here, only worth 25 pips, then bam. So buying this up, if you got an order on each one of these fresh lows, then here's the cash out. Then you buy this plunge here below this outlier, then cash out into the last toji. Now we're waiting to cash out to here. 
And if we took enough off the table, we can, without touching the position, we can red, let the rest go to here. Go flat. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I think FOMC tomorrow, but they already said they're not going to touch the money. So it's up to Europe or somebody else to fuck with the money. From a fundamental standpoint, for me, it's just about, like, are we going to fill this thing by the end of the week? Or at least make it back to here, structurally? Or are we going to keep tanking, you know? And honestly, if I can make, in four hours, I can make 50 pips, um, I think that's fine. Look here. To this, almost precisely to this. I'm banging on that. Then shear down, take out this fractal, of course. I'm buying into that. Cashing out. Almost almost got an engulf out of it. Not quite. It may take tomorrow to take out the high of today, which is right here. And I'll definitely be cashing out, go flat, and then just Come, when I do that, I'm going to come in with limits right after that. So if it does come up here, come back in with trailing limits underneath because I'm just interested in this trade. I'm interested in to uh, swing trade, even if it's only for um, 50 pips, right? Like this is kind of a swing trade. You're selling up into this, right? You're sell, sell, sell on these one-hour rooftops. And then... You're really counting on them just ripping out the low of this day. And this is a very small range day. So, yeah, you don't need the ICT to tell you, uh, well, this, well, this is the low of the day. This is the breaker bar. It never comes back to that. You know, this is the breaker. This is the order block. Look at this thing just sheared off. Comes back. Got a market order, and you sold for two hours here. One sell, two sell. Not bad, not bad. But you kind of got to get out because all of a sudden you're really only up about eight pips here. I'm not into this buy and hold stuff. Let your profits run. Just can't imagine. Okay, so it's quarter after. It was a 15 minute traders there. A 15 minute chart's outrageous with the three RSI. Look at these wicks here. This is the argument. This is Asia. The wicks in Asia, probably just a spread getting ridiculous there. The half hour chart. Alrighty then. So <clears throat> we're going to just have to ride it out until um, we make a, uh, up another. 10 pips here.